The motion picture industry owes a big debt to the equine world through the unlikely union of Leland Stanford, a mid-19th century robber baron, and Edward Moybridge, California's most famous scenic photographer. If Stanford fit the stereotype of a railroad tycoon, portly, well-dressed, manicured gentleman carrying a pearl-covered walking cane, Moybridge was the epitome of a wizard from Middle Earth. A thin, spry man with penetrating eyes, he looked decades older than his 49 years. There was great debate among horsemen if all four of a horse's legs were lifted off the ground when galloping. This motion happened so fast it was impossible to see the truth with the naked eye. Stanford and his friends made a $25,000 bet and he was determined to prove that the legs were up. In 1872, Stanford offered Moybridge $2,000, about $50,000 today, to photograph a horse in motion. Moybridge was skeptical that it could. Things needed to wait a few years while he attended to some troubles of his own. He had just intercepted a letter between his wife and a handsome literary critic that led him to suspect that their son might be the product of their union. He walked up to him at a saloon and calmly said, My name is Moybridge. I have received a message from my wife and promptly shot him point blank in the chest. The event was the OJ trial of its day, having all the ingredients for a good drama. Sex, betrayal, a handsome victim, and a well-known and unusual defendant. The introduction of the telegraph meant that the entire nation watched the trial in real time. Moybridge defended himself by using an insanity plea and was ultimately acquitted of the murder on the grounds of justifiable homicide. He then devised a clever plan to capture the exact time when a horse might be fully aloft. Instead of using just one camera and hoping to capture the fleeting event, he bought a dozen expensive cameras and laid them out in even intervals across the path. Each camera shutter was connected by a silk thread that would break as the horse rode the set and triggered the capture of an image. On June 18, 1878, Moybridge invited members of the press to watch Stanford's horse trot across the set and triggered each of the 12 cameras, one after the other, making a sound like a drum roll. He then developed the glass plates and delivered a dozen perfectly crisp images of the horse in motion. One showed the horse with all four feet clearly in the air. Stanford had won his bet. The idea that motion could be captured and replayed was truly transcendental, and this paved the way for these slices of time to be later combined into the motion pictures we enjoy today.